Hello and welcome back. Today we'll be doing a video on Gideon for Paragon. And if you like this video, don't forget to like, or subscribe, and comment down below for what character I should do next. Now let's get into this. Firstly, Gideon, his default attack is a blast, portal blast as they call it. Forward, bit of damage, you get the gist. Next, he has Burden, it's his R1 ability, or right mouse button click, depending on your platform. And he fires projectiles that tethers him to the enemy that does a bit of damage over time as well as that person is slowed. Very useful for late game. Next is Cosmic Rift. His square ability basically drops a big part of the space rock on people on meteorite. Very powerful, especially late game. Main ability in my opinion. Next, uh, Torn Space, his escape, throws a hit ball and teleports out of the situation. And then his ultimate is Black Hole and everything gets sucked into it, basically. So if you're a hero, a minion, and whatnot, you will be pulled to the center unless you try to resist it. As a hero, you can escape it but it's easier said than done. Now I will go into my build for him. Let's go into this. Now my build for Gideon includes the Arc Magnus because it's increased damage for when the Prime Kai is activated. Very useful. Then we have Chronotonic, Fiend Elixir, Harvester Key, Health Potion, Health Token, Mana Potion, and Scout Sword. Not bad, situational, but it has its moments. Next we have uh, Chronomancer Disc with Free two cost energy cards because it's very useful to have damage increase on a character that's primarily about damage. Duh. But um, next after that we have a very similar one, but not the same. We have the exact same card, first card, Chronomancer Disc again, but with uh, one two cost energy card and two two cost mana card. And this card you will have early game, like when you first get your points build it into that and go for mana first because mana is extremely useful for Gideon. Then after that we have Crystal Conduit, we have uh, three, three um, energy pen cards so basically if the enemy has energy resistance you're able to punch it at a certain degree, very situational, I don't always get it. Uh, and then we have Sage's Ward, it's just an increase in damage with a free cost uh, energy card with two two costs, um, energy cards is very useful if needed. Then we have the Solaris Reactors with three three costs uh, energy cards, which is very useful as well as it has a clone in my deck. So we have two of those of that same build. Next we have a Tempered Plate. This is basically to allow us not to get ganked if required. Very situational in my opinion and I rarely use it on this build. I'm not gonna lie. It's not very useful on a caster who also has a teleport as well as who can just destroy in certain situations. So basically on my temper plate I have uh, a 3 cost resistance and 2-2 two, two cost resistance for the physical. Then my next one is Tomb Barrier as well as I have a 3 cost on that and then 2 more 2 costs. Just to allow an even proportion and just to be actually successful in a conflict or confrontation. Now, the card you want to get first is Chronomancer Disc with the 2 energy cost uh, and then the 2-2 two, two mana cost just because that first card very useful, it allows you to do all your abilities and you won't have teleport too often back and you can actually get more CP than your opponents. Uh, and then after that go for the other Chronomancer Disc with the two, two, oh no, 3 2 cost energy cards. Then after that I would either go for a Surlis Reactor or a Sage's Ward just because it's very useful to have the damage of course, obvious. Uh, and then we have, um, you would either go for another Surlis Reactor or the Sage's Ward, whatever you didn't pick. Or you could go for a Resistance depending on the team you're up against. So let's say there's a Chimera who's just picking you off every few seconds, like he's a prick and you can't do anything about him. Uh, basically, just go for the temple plate instead of damage because it's helpful. Then you have some resistance, you're able to escape easier and have a better time. And then you would either go for the one, the damage card you missed, or you would go for crystal conduit just because having the pen is useful. It's yeah, very useful. Let's say there's a steel, he's got a shit ton of energy resistance, and you can't do anything about it. You would just use this, and you would punch it through him just to be a good guy for your team and a bad guy for the enemy team. However, I would like to say one thing, this deck is very expensive, it's built for many different situations, so all the costs together will be expensive early on, but it will pay off late game. Like, Gideon is a very good character late game, but you need to know how to play him of course, but practically perfect. 
Now, one thing I would like to say is, this is my build, everyone's got their own build, so it's subject to ridicule, etc, etc, I'm not too bothered. Everyone has their thoughts and opinions, I respect that. But this is my build, and if you enjoyed, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment down below. As well as, after this little bit, I will have some clips of me playing as Gideon to show his capability, as well as how successful he can be in a conflict. I hope to see you next time, and bye bye. Okay.